Greetings from the Burlington Science Center. I'm science specialist Sean Musselman, and I'm sharing with you today the easy steps that you can follow to create your very own cloud in your classroom while introducing the water cycle and the different forms of matter to students. You'll need the following supplies on hand to complete this activity with your students. When we are creating a cloud, we want to talk about the four ingredients that we need uh, to make clouds on, in our Earth's atmosphere. The very first is the water, and the water that's in my jar here um, represents bodies of water on our Earth's surface, such as oceans, lakes, seas, streams, uh, any sort of standing or flowing water. Our second step that we need is a heat source. Now, we don't boil things uh, on our Earth's surface, um, except in volcanically active areas. So what we need here, you know, this hot plate represents the sun and the solar radiation that's coming from the sky, warming our Earth's surface and warming the, um, the soil and the, the ocean water and the seawater. This is where you can start engaging kids with the water cycle and different forms of matter. Right now we have liquid water. Uh, when we add heat to liquid water, we are going to uh, start warming up that water and eventually when water reaches a point of 100 degrees Celsius, uh, it begins to evaporate and turn into a gas. Now when water rises in our Earth's systems, it rises up into the much colder atmosphere. Because as we get further and further away from the ground, our air becomes much colder because it's not close to the ground which absorbs heat much better. Um, so it becomes colder. That's going to be represented by our ice cubes here. Uh, in a moment we're going to put this on top uh, to represent the cold upper levels of the atmosphere. When water cools and condenses, uh, it condenses best when it has some sort of particles in the air that those water droplets can begin to cling to. So, what we're going to produce is a little bit of pollution. Now, this comes in many ways. It comes in the form of volcanic eruptions and volcanic ash, which is happening on a daily basis, but it's also in the form of pollution that humans make, like from our car exhaust systems and our, and our smokestacks. So, I'm going to now produce a little bit of smoke, and now we're going to drop and I'm going to quickly put that cold tin top on and what we're going to see if we use a flashlight here is we're going to start to see convection currents forming in our jar that's water that's rising evaporating because it's a gas but it quickly cools when it touches and reaches the surface of this tin can so what we're getting then is a condensation action where the water droplets are coming together, cannot, you know, making contact with that dust that we made from the match and is forming very large, now visible water droplets that are continuing to circulate and even get bigger. Uh, this cloud, I like to say, best resembles like a stratus cloud uh, or a cloud that, um, you know, a fog cloud, if you will. Fog clouds are just really low-lying um, stratus clouds in our atmosphere. Now, one more thing that I think is important that you can share with your kids is what's happening underneath this tin plate. And you can have them guess, and many of them may already know what they might find, but when we uncover this hot plate, or excuse me, when we uncover the jar here, what we are going to find is wa that water droplets are beginning to form on the underside of this tin pan. Right? That's because when that water makes contact with the tin pan, it cools and uh, turns back into a liquid and condenses. And this is a great example of uh, how precipitation forms in clouds and how we get rain or sleet or uh, even snow if it's cold enough and that, that water stays frozen as a solid form instead of liquid. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you have success with this activity in your classroom and keep teaching science. Thank you.